Have you ever woken up and felt like something was off? Maybe you had a <clears throat> scratchy throat, or you felt like you were shivering, and you had these thoughts, something is not quite right here. So thoughts start racing through your head. I'm going to have to look after my kids. I'm going to have to call into work. I'm going to have to go see my doctor. And so you make an appointment, and you climb into your car, bundled up, drive to your physician, go into the office, wait in the waiting room, eventually get seen. Doctor talks to you, examines you, says you need some antibiotics. So you bundle up again, get back into your car, drive to the pharmacy, talk to the pharmacist, wait while you get your medication prepared for you, climb back into your car again, go home, climb into bed. It's a big ordeal. But what if it didn't have to be that way? What if you could get the medical care that you needed from the comfort of your own home? We're about to witness something quite profound. We're going to see a radical transformation in the entire way that we experience the healthcare journey. And it all comes down to something that we use on a daily basis, something that we all have with us right now, something that we are born with, and something that I'm using at this very moment, our voices. I'm a big technology enthusiast, and I love gadgets. So when I was about 10 years old, I came home from, from school one day, and my parents said, we bought this new technology. It's the latest thing. Everybody's talking about it. I was really excited, so I ran into the office to check out what it was, and there was this screen sitting on a rectangular box with a cord attached to a keyboard. It was our first personal computer from Tandy, uh, Tandy computer from Radio Shack. And some of you will remember what this was like. We got out our five and a quarter inch uh, floppy disks, put it in the floppy drive, turned on the computer, and then just waited <laughs> patiently while well, MS-DOS loaded, and we got this prompt. And then we'd sit there and we'd type. And for the life of me, I can't remember what I typed, but I spent hours sitting at this computer typing something. And then the technology evolved. And MS-DOS turned into MS-Windows. And now we had a graphical user interface. We had a mouse that we could click and we could drag and drop things on the screen. I remember playing with those primitive paint programs and drawing stick men. It was great fun. And then technology continued to evolve. And just over a decade ago, Steve Jobs stood up on stage and introduced the iPhone to the world. Right? Now we had a personal computer in our palm, and we could tap and swipe and pinch and zoom. It, it was magical. So we've seen some incredible technology advancements over the years. But there's something that's been the same among all of them so far. In the first case, we had a keyboard. In the second case, we had a mouse. And in the third case, we have a glass screen. They all are a type of physical device that allowed us to interface with a computer. In other words, we have had to adapt the way that we communicate in order for the computer to understand what we're saying. But now, for the first time, due to advances in computing power, artificial intelligence, and technologies such as natural language processing and understanding, that has completely changed. We can now use our voices, and computers can understand what we're saying. We no longer have to adapt to the way a computer works. The computers are adapting to us. And now we are seeing the adoption of uh, voice assistants, smart speakers, similar to the ones here. Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, Microsoft's uh, Cortana, uh, Apple Siri, Samsung Bixby, the list goes on and on and on. So why is voice so compelling? Well, there are three main reasons. Number one, voice is natural. Using our voices is the most natural way that we know how to communicate. When babies are born, what is the first thing that they do? They use their voice. They cry. Number two, voice is efficient. Voice saves us time. When I get a, some junk email, usually the first thing I'll do is I'll hit delete. And then what happens? I get it again next week and I hit delete. And again, I get it again, I hit delete. And sometimes I ask myself, why didn't I take the time when I first got it to hit the unsubscribe and go through the unsubscribe process? And of course, the, the answer is because it, took too, it would have taken too much time. Time is one of the most valuable commodities that we possess, and anything that saves us time is tremendously important. 
So the third reason is that we can multitask. You can use your voice when you are bathing your kids. You can use your voice when you are working out. You can use your voice when you're cooking. You can use your voice when you're driving. But we certainly shouldn't be typing, texting, swiping, whatever, you name it, while we're operating motor vehicles. And because this is so compelling, we are seeing massive adoption of this technology. In fact, devices like this are being adopted at a rate faster than any consumer technology in our history, including the mobile phones. And something else that's really interesting is that even before children know how to communicate with a computer, before they know how to read or write, text, type, swipe, you name it, they're already talking to computers. This is how they're growing up now. This is the norm. And at the other age, at the other um, end of the spectrum, elderly people are also adopting this at a tremendously rapid rate because there is essentially no new technology to learn. If you know how to speak, you can use the device. Now, one area that is going to be profoundly changed is healthcare. And as a physician, this is the part that really, really fascinates me. We are soon going to be living in a world of ambient computing, meaning these these devices are going to be around listening to what we're saying and being able to respond to us in an intelligent and personal way. We are going to have artificial intelligent healthcare teams living in our homes. So what does that mean? How does that practically play out? Let me give you some examples. Let's start with a simple example. Let's say you're at home and you are making a salad and you're chopping a nice, fresh, crunchy orange carrot, chop, chop, and you slip and you cut your finger. It's not exactly easy to run around, find your first aid manual, figure out what to do when you are bleeding. But what if you just had a device that you could just talk to and say, hey, I cut my finger, what do I do? And it just tells you what to do. The same thing, of course, would apply to other first aid scenarios, insect stings, burns, CPR. This can provide you with the information that you need rapidly, seamlessly. Another example, let's imagine that you have an aging parent that would like to continue to maintain their independence and live on their own, but they're becoming forgetful and starting to experience a source of, uh, uh, starting to experience a sense of isolation. How can this help with that person? Well, imagine if the device simply knew when they woke up and said, good morning, how did you sleep? And it would capture that response, and it could perhaps share that data with the family or with the healthcare provider. And it would just take it from there, guide the person through their day. It's time for your medications. This is the dose, this is the medication you need. And you've got a couple of appointments today. Don't forget about this appointment, I'll remind you later on. It basically is acting as a care aid for that person. And what's more, it can also be a source of companionship. There are some studies that show that having a device such as this in the home actually decreases loneliness, decreases that sense of isolation, and increases a sense of well-being. Imagine if this device could actually help that person to maintain their independence and live in their home alone that much longer. As another example, what about people with chronic diseases, diabetes, or perhaps those that have just come home from the hospital after a hip replacement? How can it help with those people? Well, these are conditions that a person lives with 24 hours a day seven days a week, but they only get to see their healthcare provider just a fraction of that time. What if the device was a surrogate for that physician? Some, somebody that you could ask questions to, get responses about your concerns about your particular, your particular condition, guide you through your care, and help to optimize your care. And what's interesting is that the device could start to learn about your normal patterns and start to alert you if things were going off track. Imagine if the device could be proactive and detect when there was a problem and alert you to get the medical care before there was a serious issue. We are seeing this starting to happen today. And we haven't even talked about the part that I think is the most fascinating. The best way to explain this is to think about an analogy with digital photography. So as you may know, when you take a photograph, in addition to hopefully catching a beautiful photo, you also also capture data that is known as metadata. That includes things like what camera did you use, what was the aperture setting, the shutter speed, GPS coordinates, and so on. 
Well, in voice, you can capture similar data, and it's typically known as vocal biomarkers. When my son comes home from school, and I ask him, how was school today? And he says to me, it was great. That has one meaning. And when I ask him the next day, how was school today? And he says to me, it was great. The exact same words, completely different meaning. And if you can start to describe those differences, and you can, based on frequency, intensity, pitch, rhythm, and other variables, the artificial intelligence can start to tease out those patterns and start to identify significant changes, like changes in your mood, depression. They can even detect changes in your speech as a result of cognitive decline from conditions such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. In fact, there was a study that was done by the Mayo Clinic that showed a statistically significant correlation between the way somebody speaks and the risk of coronary artery disease. And there was another study that showed a statistically significant correlation between the way somebody with congestive heart failure speaks and the risk of death. Currently, doctors use vital signs, things like blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, temperature, as key indicators of our health status. I believe we're going to move towards an era when voice is going to be the most valuable vital sign. It's non-invasive, and you just speak. We are going to be able to hear our health status. So again, I ask you the question, have you ever woken up in the morning and felt like something was off? <clears throat> that scratchy throat. But before those thoughts start running through your head, you're voice assistant or smart speaker says, good morning, how are you doing? And you say, I'm, I'm not feeling so well. And already, the assistant is running an analysis of your voice. It's listening to you cough. And it already has some ideas of what could be the problem. So it says to you, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you mind if I help? And you say, of course. So it starts to ask you questions similar to a doctor. Do you have a sore throat? Do you have a runny nose? And other questions. You answer those questions and it says, you know what, I think you have strep throat. You need, we need to do a strep test. Would it be okay if I had one delivered to your home right now? And you go, sure. Shortly thereafter, however it gets delivered, maybe it's by a drone. <laughs> it gets delivered to your home and the assistant talks you through how to use it. This is how you do the test. Let's analyze the results. And yes, it looks like you do have strep throat. So now we need to get you some antibiotics. Don't worry. I already know which, what you're allergic to because I know some of your medical history. So if it's okay with you, I'm going to send you the appropriate antibiotic to your home. Fantastic. And, and while I'm at it, you can't go into work today, so I'll make the phone call for you into work. Great. So the antibiotic arrives again. You take it. The device monitors your recovery, tells you when to take each dose, and alerts you to any potential complications that would be an indication for you to go see your doctor. This is something that we have never seen before. Since the origin of time, we have been using our voices. Our entire existence has been built up on the ability for us to communicate with, other, with others. From sitting around a crackling campfire sharing stories, to going to a concert to hear your favorite singer sing her latest song, from being a shoulder to cry on for your son or daughter, to singing happy birthday to your mother or father, from going to your doctor and sharing some of your most innermost fears, concerns, and thoughts, to perhaps even being inspired by hearing some ideas worth spreading from this very stage, we have all been using our voices to share ideas, entertain, educate, and make contributions to society. While computers have been very powerful in helping us to do so, they have been playing catch-up in our unique ability to speak. Now, for the first time, we are seeing voice technology merge with our ability to have a conversation. The voice era has arrived. Voice, our most powerful possession, is the new operating system of our lives. Don't be afraid to speak up. Thank you very much.